Hey, Brandy. I never imagined our first meeting years to be in hospital. Especially during one of my shifts. How long has it been? Far too long. <laughs> I never would have imagined you to end up being the nurse that was going to look after my husband. What a way for us to reunite. I just, I last saw you at our high school reunion, remember? What was that, like, five years ago or something? Yeah, that sounds about right. We used to hang out all the time in high school. <laughs> what a small world we live in, though. You're right about that. Well, I'm glad that my husband is in good hands. I wouldn't have to worry about him if he's with you. I'll leave the rest up to you then. Not a problem, Brandy. It's the least I can do. Wow, it really is crazy though, huh? Looking after my best friend's husband after all these years. I do hope it's nothing serious. All you hear while working in this field is grim news every day. Well, I hear he might only have another two or three years left. I'm really sorry to hear that, Brandy. But Paul has come to terms with it, I suppose. He's trying his best to enjoy every moment while he's alive. He made a whole list of places he wants to go after he leaves the hospital, so we'll be quite busy, it seems. <laughs> We've made a lot of plans for the future, even if that's only over the next few years. Gotcha! Taking the time for you two to talk about the future is definitely the right thing to do in his situation. I'd imagine you'd have to deal with a ton of different healthcare documents too, with all of the times he's come into the hospital. Well, I guess it's all good since your husband is rolling in the dough, right? Oh, why do you say that? Please, stop playing the fool. We all know that your husband is the CEO of his company, right? I saw him on TV once, but I didn't know he was your husband at that time. I can't believe you scored yourself a hobby is doing so well financially. Well, it's true what you've just said. In fact, his secretary actually goes through all of those healthcare documents as well as the payments in regards to all of this. However, the deputy CEO is taking over due to my husband being in the hospital right now. I was wondering where all of the payments were coming from to cover his stay. But I suppose that explains it. This is one of the more expensive rooms in our hospital too, after all. I was genuinely worried about your finances for a second. But I suppose that do it, being a CEO and all. <laughs> yeah, he's been putting his heart and soul in the company for years now. And I guess he got lucky and hit the jackpot in terms of modern trends that consumers wanted. Wait, I've been meaning to ask. Where do you live right now, Brandy? Weird question, but I love to see what sort of house we live in. You want to see our house? Hmm, let's see. I think the only photo we have is when it first got built. So it might not be as accurate as to what it looks like now. But it did look like this about 15 years ago. It's about a half hour drive from the hospital. Wow! I didn't know you both live in such a rich area. So, I guess your husband really did rack in the money from working as a CEO for all these years. Congrats to both of you! Yeah, I really am thankful for all that he's done for me. He's sacrificed so much to get us where we are today. Well then, I guess I have to provide the utmost best for such an important man. Aha. Thanks, Susan. He'd appreciate that. He's a man that works a little too hard, you see. So I'd appreciate if you kept your eye on him so he doesn't go wandering off out of that hospital room. I wouldn't have to worry as much if I was always around him while he was in the hospital, but I really can't be doing that with my work schedule, unfortunately. Your husband is in good hands. I'll be treating him with nothing more than the best of the best. <laughs> I'll do my best to hop into this room whenever I can, so don't worry, Brandy. I'm glad I have someone as reliable as you looking after my husband. 
I mean, I've been in this field for years. I'm a veteran at this point. <laughs> Leave it to your good old friend, Susan. <laughs> you sure are reliable, as I remember. Anyway, I'll let his secretary know to visit too at some point. She knows he's in the hospital now, so I'm sure she'd like to visit at one point. I'll let the receptionist know that she'll be coming at one point or another, so don't worry about it on your end. No problems. You just take it easy now, yeah? I got your back. I really appreciate it, Susan. You just made my day. Hey, Paul, where are you right now? Your secretary was trying to get in contact with you, you know? Sorry, Brandy. I want to leave this hospital as soon as I can. I told you I'd pick you up from the hospital, remember? Why couldn't you just wait a few hours? The doctor has told you time and time again not to leave without permission. Listen, Brandy. My condition has gotten worse over the past few days. And instead of being able to leave today, they were planning on moving me into another hospital. That's why I'm heading toward this new location as we speak. Wait, why haven't I heard about this yet? Where exactly are you being transferred to? I'm afraid I can't tell you that. What do you mean? Your secretary has been looking all over for you. And if you're moving to a different hospital, we need the address so she can change it on your medical bills. Don't worry about the money, Brandy. I've got it all sorted. The one in charge of this whole transfer has organized all that, so I appreciate the concern. But I've got everything covered. You've got nothing to worry about. Wait, who in the world are you talking about? You got someone else to help you move before mentioning it to me. Don't worry. I promise you, it's nothing shady. I suppose, but I'm still worried about you. Tell me, who is this person? The nurse that took care of me. Your friend Susan. Susan organized this? Yeah, she told me everything I needed to know to make my decision. Anyways, I hope you'll understand what I'm going through. I guess it's okay if you're with her, but... Why didn't you tell me sooner that you were thinking of making such a huge life decision? Please, at least tell me the address of this new place so I can visit. Brandy, seriously, there's nothing to worry about. That's not what I mean, Paul. If you go to the hospital room that I was in, there will be a letter on the bedside table. My laptop will be there too. I'm sure you remember the password. Anyways, Everything will be there in regards to what will happen to my work moving forward. So please, just follow what's written there. You're not making any sense. You have to tell me everything that happens. It can be brief if you're in a rush, but please, give me a call. Sorry for being so selfish, Brandy. But please, just trust me on this one. Anyways, it looks like we've arrived to my new hospital, so I'll contact you later. I have to fill in some paperwork, it seems. Wait, Paul, you can't just go. Please, I don't understand what you're trying to do. You were trying to get in contact with Paul, right? Is something up? What do you mean? Have you been keeping up? My husband has suddenly been transferred over to another hospital without telling me the location. You know where he is, right? Are you with him right now? Oh, right, right. I'm sure even you didn't consider that he might switch to another hospital when you were expecting him home tonight. But there was a sudden change in plans after we discussed everything with the doctor. I just don't understand why I didn't get told any of this when... I'm his wife. I mean, you're not particularly family right now, are you? Wait, what are you on about, Susan? Uh, you and Paul are divorced. Keep up with the program, Brandy. Where did you get that idea? I mean, I'd know because I sent the divorce paper in myself. Is this your idea of some dumb prank? 
You're definitely mistaken in me for somebody else. <laughs> I know I'm not when you're the only Brandy I know. I sent it in this morning when I went to organize this transfer. It was clearly a divorce paper, no doubt about it. Oh, and to top it off, we sent in our marriage certificate too. Anyways, there you go. You're no longer Paul's wife. In fact, that'd be me. If anything happens to him in the future, I'll be receiving the news first. In fact, you probably won't hear about the news at all now, that you two aren't married. You have no idea who you're messing with, Susan. You've gone too far with this joke of yours. Tell me where my husband is already. Brandy, you did this to yourself. You were his wife, and yet you only showed yourself two times a week at most. Sometimes even only once. While you were neglecting him on the daily, I ended up stealing his heart. Sorry. How could you do this to me? I've been trying to get with him ever since I heard that he was the CEO of some company. I look into that after, and it seemed like you were really telling the truth. And the address that was written on his documents turned out to be in a super wealthy area of town. He even told me about how much he was when I asked him nicely. You are pure evil, trying to steal someone's husband just for the money? Well, I had a lot of time to steal his heart after all. I know more about him than you do at this point. And it seems like he only has three marriage to live. So I thought I'd play marriage with him for a bit and then gain all of his wealth after his passing. You're disgusting. I don't care for his looks or personality or anything, mind you. But his wealth sure made me fall in love. Again, this is all your fault. You've been barely seeing him ever since he's been in the hospital. I trusted you, Susan. I've been thinking of quitting nursing for a little while, actually. They really treat me horribly in the workplace, you know. But now, I wouldn't have to worry about money a single bit. Seems like that house will end up being mine. But I'm not as dumb to move into the house that you two had been happily living in either. I'd be selling the house and taking that money to buy a nice one-person apartment downtown. I'm not a huge fan of cleaning a big house unlike you. <laughs> that house is his property that he worked hard to earn. You have no right to just take it like that. Oh, the best part is, I can just take it like that. I'm his new wife after all. After Paul passes, all of his belongings will go directly to me. But I'm not heartless either. That house is empty for the time being while he's in the hospital, so you can live there like you have been in the meantime. Who do you think you are? But when the time comes, I'm sorry, but you'll have to leave. Even though I'd love to have my best friend by my side during retirement, you're no longer legally attached to this house anymore. But here's the deal. It was your house too, so I'll give you a fraction of the money when I sell the house. Do you really think you'll get away with this? I'll be a millionaire by the end of this after all. And you were my closest friend back in school, so of course, I have your back. Anyways, gotta get back to looking after my husband. Catch you later. I should probably start working on talking to the higher-ups here to do with my resignation too. <laughs> Wait, Susan. Long time no talk, Brandy. How have you been? I've actually had such an eventful life these past three years, flying around to all of these gorgeous countries. I guess a rich husband is all you need to obtain true happiness. <laughs> it's been a while. I've been busy with my own life too. Look, I'll just cut it right to the chase. Paul has passed away. Right. That's your reaction? I guess if you aren't married to him for three years, you really lose attachment, huh? Anyways, as I was saying, I'll be receiving all of that money that he had saved up. 
So you might want to leave that luxurious house that you've been living in because it's no longer yours. I'll be taking that along with Paul's bank savings. We're not divorced, though. Um, yes, you are. What are you talking about? Get with the program. How slow are you? I sent out the divorce paper for you two to split three years ago, remember? And right after that, I sent a marriage proposal for the both of us to get together. Don't tell me you didn't know. Those divorce papers never got accepted. We're telling lies now, are we? Listen to what I'm about to say because I'm sure you'd love to hear this. I've been living with Paul for the past year. See, I found where he had been staying. Oh yeah, keep telling yourself that. Three years ago, when you told me all of that, I was in pure shock for obvious reasons. I looked everywhere for him, but I had no luck at all. I accepted that my husband no longer wanted to be with me and was going to go along with the divorce originally. It hurt my soul. But if that was his decision, there wasn't anything I could do about it. How in the world have you been with him if you couldn't even find him in the first place? Well, a year after all of that happened, I got in contact with his secretary, who had been looking for him all this time. I took a bit of research, but we finally found which hospital he had been admitted to. And by that point, Paul was about to leave soon after, so I met up with him during that time. Wait, you mean... You saw him? I sure did. And I asked about everything that had happened along with the situation about his medical bills. You lied to him and told him that if his medical bills kept racking up, then I'd end up getting mad or something, right? And you told him about how much longer he'd need to be in the hospital for, didn't you? I was just doing my job, thank you very much. If you were just mentioning his condition to him, that would have been fine. But you manipulated him in order to split us apart. You told him that his condition would gradually deteriorate to the point where I'd put a burden on my bank account and make me feel awful for having to keep looking after him. I told you! All I did was give medical advice from a nurse's standpoint. I've told similar things to patients that have had the same illness as he had in the past. I had a chat with his doctor too, and he told me all of what you said was a lie. Wait, you went out of your way to talk to his doctor? Oh, I talked to both Paul and his doctor. And he finally figured out that all you had been doing was trying to gain his wealth when he passes. And after that, Paul put an end to the divorce papers that you made him submit earlier. You didn't! I'm sure you must have been notified about your marriage not going through. Did you not look? You are just spouting nonsense at this point. I've been flying around the world all of these years. Your marriage was denied along with his divorce procedures. It sure took a lot of effort from my end to stop this from happening, but it seems like I had the last laugh. Though I'm sure you wouldn't know how hard it is to overwrite marriage documents. There's no way you're telling the truth. You're saying both of you are still married? We've been living quietly for the past year, and I was able to be with him until his passing. I'll never forgive you for what you tried to do. It was your fault for neglecting him. How immature can you be? You manipulated the kindness of my husband. You lied saying it was for the best for him to split up with me. He sent him for a forged divorce papers as well as your own marriage proposal just for his wealth? Even though he thought he was doing the right thing for my sake, he ended up crying and begging for forgiveness. I was just trying to add a bit of spice to his life. How is it fair that only you get to live off his wealth? You barely even visited him in the hospital too. It is so crazy to think that your husband might have wanted some attention even if it was from someone else? Because the CEO of our company was in the hospital. I had to take over as vice president. Unlike you, I had been working to the bone. 
Wait, you are the vice president all along? Old news, Susan. I'm the CEO now after his passing. I've been working with him ever since he started the business up all those years ago. And while we were all doing our best to improve our company, I became very close to Paul, which led to our marriage. Besides, if we're going to talk about looking after our significant other, you literally just said you were flying all around the world. Even after he left the hospital, you never showed yourself to the apartment he had been living in by himself either. Hey, you don't need to bring that up. You didn't even realize he'd moved house during this past year, did you? Of course you didn't. You were gold digging some other guy, weren't you? How do you know about that? Anyways, I'm glad I got to spend time with him while he was alive and get those divorce papers organized without you realizing. You really made my life difficult, but I can finally feel like I got the upper hand. Ugh! How dare you meet him behind my back! How dare you steal my husband! Our secretary's very good at doing her job. Not only is she an elite level secretary, but she also has a law degree. So we really owe her one for solving all of this. Wait, so what happens to Paul's wealth? How much comes into my bank account? Were you listening? I was always his wife. Meaning, I'll be taking the entirety of his finances. I don't plan on giving you a single cent. Don't you worry. How could you do this to me? Now what will I do? I only quit my job as a nurse because I knew that money was going to be mine. I used all of my retirement funds from that job too. I was going to use all of his money to enjoy the rest of my life. I'm in debt right now. That isn't my problem. Come on, Brandy. We might not be on good terms now, but I did look after your husband in the hospital. You could spare me a little bit of money for that, right? He was in there for a long time, you know? I was only looking for places to move to recently. Surely you can help an old friend out. You won't be receiving anything from me. What you will receive, however, is a letter from my lawyer. I'm sure you'd love to read what's written there. Wait, what are you talking about? Oh, it's the greatest present you'll ever get, Susan. You'll be paying for the cancellation fee for both the divorce papers and your marriage certificate. Oh, come on. That's old news. <laughs> for some reason, you seem to think that there aren't any consequences to your actions. But it seems like now you don't have any money to use on vacations. So it's time to pay up for what you've done. Wait a second, Brandy. I told you I'm in debt. There's nothing I can do to help you, all right? You quit your job on your own accord. Maybe it's time for you to look for a new one. You knew what you were doing from the very first moment, spouting all those lies into my husband's head because you knew how he'd react. You let your own greed take over and you clearly crossed the line. What you did was illegal and you've made me your enemy. Trust me. I'll make you regret everything you've done. I mean, you both ended up together once again, right? And I didn't even take any of that money anyways. So we're even. You really don't understand, do you? And you're a CEO now, right? You have all the money you could ask for. So why would you need a little old me to pay a few bills for you? You wouldn't do that to an old friend, would you? I'm sorry, but don't think of us as friends ever again. I don't ever want to talk to you again. Anyways, you'll be hearing from my lawyer very shortly. Have fun! Wait! Brandy! Look, I'm sorry, okay? I was in a bad place! Please! Help me out! After the news went to our lawyer about all of the things that happened with this case, it was made apparent that Susan had broken many codes of conduct as a nurse, meaning she could not return to the medical field ever again, and had to resort to part-time jobs to pay off the money she owed us. I heard she got dumped by the other man she was seeing too, but since I see the payments from her come in every month, I'm sure she's doing alright for herself somewhere. <laughs>